Today, we find ourselves in a time when it seems solving problems is harder than ever. And yet, to make the kind of society we want to live in, we must get things done. So how do we do that? How do we assemble the people, the material, and the ideas to create a future we all want? A good place to start is to acknowledge some solutions are easy and obvious. Some will take trial and error to develop. But before it all, we must resolve to begin the work now and to work through every challenge with wit, grit, and the faith that people can make a worthwhile life if we work together. For almost 70 years, there's been a place at the heart of Butte County where this theme is a core mission. The work they have chosen is to find solutions for those among us whose challenges, both mental and physical, are beyond anyone's ability to cope with alone. That place is the Work Training Center. This is the story of their mission, past, present, and future. In every population, there are those who have disadvantages of mind or body, but no deficit in determination or strength. Like all of us, they want to contribute, to live and work and earn for themselves, to create the kind of independent lives we all value. The challenge has always been to find the special set of circumstances to allow them to unlock their potential and let us all benefit from their contributions. This is what motivated the founders of the Work Training Center back in 1949. The Work Training Center was started by a group of parents that were looking for an alternative to what existed in the day. These were parents that wanted to see their children live and work in their communities, go out on their own as much as they possibly could, and they wanted to teach them a variety of life skills, social skills, to be able to cope with society at that time. Seventy years ago, the world for special needs communities was a much harder place. The fate of those with mental or physical disabilities were closer to those of criminals than of free people. They were often shuttered in state mental hospitals, never to venture forth into the outside world in any meaningful way. State asylums were started with all the best of intentions, but as many large institutionalized organizations, they could not provide the individual care that was necessary. So there were many instances of large numbers of individuals essentially being forgotten, medicated, uh, kept under restraint, and not able to experience life as you and I know it today. Those individuals that were in mental hospitals uh, either tended to regress or parents started to gather together to find alternative ways to work with their children rather than send them off to these state mental hospitals. By the 1960s, both progressive reformers and conservative budget cutters both recognized these horrors for what they were and joined together to craft a law to make things better for these unfortunate populations. This movement was culminated in what is now known as the Lanterman Act. The Lanterman Act provided a mechanism to allow individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities to stay at home or to receive services for their disability locally in their community without having to resort to being shipped off to a mental hospital. Individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities were now capable of being seen by their community as individuals with value and that could contribute to society and to their community. In the 1970s, the Work Training Center came under the umbrella of the Lanterman Act and created a three-part system for helping the mentally and physically challenged people of Butte County. 
The first part is the Work Training Center's vocational programs, which train up clients so they can venture forth into the job market and get jobs best suited for their skills. The Work Training Center pretty much helps people grow. It opened up more opportunities for me, not only within the Work Training Center, but within my main life goals. Even before I started working here, my main goal was to actually just move out of my parents and start being more independent, and that's actually what the Work Training Center allowed me to do right there. The Work Training Center has changed my life. Pretty much it gave me the opportunity to be more independent with my life. Instead of having people just sit at home and doing nothing, they come to work and they're doing something productive, you know? The Work Training Center, you could see it as a job or you could see it as going, friend, going to work with friends, you know? Friends who basically over time become family. That, that's, that means a lot right there to me. The second part is the Work Training Center's workshop programs which help some of our clients find employment in our work training center facilities and businesses. I have cerebral palsy. My hands are okay to work with. I, I have no problems doing stuff with my hands. I've had jobs that were a lot, they put a lot of like pressure on me so I could do stuff. We would get things and pack them in boxes and I had to walk around and and move around a lot and it was it was hard on my back and my legs. They get stiff and my back gets stiff. The work train centers make, made my life a lot easier. Having a job makes me feel like I'm accomplishing something. It gives people something to do and uh, so they won't have to stay home and be bored. And it gives them a little spending money. The third part is the Work Training Center's day programs, which provide a place where people with the most severe mental and physical challenges can fund and enjoy activities so they can provide themselves satisfaction and lend some assistance to their caregivers. How has the Joe McGeech Center changed my life? Obviously, if you have a child who is struggling in any respect, uh, struggling in school, struggling with their self-identity or unhappy, it affects the family, it affects you. Her outlook on life is much more positive. It's had a dramatic effect. It's, it's a steady growth that we can witness. Here it's a social environment and she is developing social skills and, and people with disabilities and who can't drive or don't have access to public transportation. Very difficult to have a social life and develop social skills and this program does that for her. A lot of people see it as a respite for the for the caregivers and it serves that for sure. That Sometimes that's important but their focus is really on the client. They understand that they're offering respite but that's not the function. It's, it's to provide something for Yvonne. She's treated with respect, she's learning skills, she's learning social skills and, and she's productive. She feels like she's productive. Through the 1980s, the 1990s, and into the 2000s, the Work Training Center was able to transform the lives of thousands in our county. But over the last 12 years, the dangers of having the foundation of the Work Training Center's mission, the Lanterman Act, at the mercy of the government in Sacramento have revealed themselves. Since the early 2000s, Politicians and special interests have attacked the funding and eroded the buying power of organizations like the Work Training Center. The rates that have been apportioned by the state have not kept up with the changes in the cost of living and the cost of op operating our programs from year to year. We have gone up until 2016 uh, for 12 years without any rate increases. So we are operating today on effectively the same dollars that we get from the state of California as we did 12 years ago. These dollars obviously have not kept up with the rising cost of living and the cost of the support services, including labor that we need, uh, to be able to carry on our programs. With these challenges facing those carrying out the mission of the Work Training Center, the question becomes how best to sustain these services 
which help those working so hard to help themselves. How does our community protect this population from the decisions of strangers in Sacramento? The answer, we believe, is for the center to adapt again and move towards a future of social entrepreneurship. Some of the things that we are doing at the Work Training Center now are converting essentially all of our commercial programs from uh, what we call a rehabilitation mode to a commercial mode. So we're in the process today of converting many of our commercial activities into full-scale businesses that will sell products and services to the public. So we're looking to take the profits generated from our social enterprise businesses, put those back into the Work Training Center to fund the other areas of the Work Training Center that do not receive the proper amount of funding that we should be getting from the state to be able to sustain those programs. Those programs include our adult day programs and our special programs that essentially work with the more challenged of our clients, those that have greater intellectual and developmental challenges to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. With the development of commercial activities, the Work Training Center is moving to become commercially self-sustaining, so by 2020, it can be fully independent of government support and constraining government rules. Here we are, after 70 years, still focusing on the best way to solve the problems of our fellow citizens whose challenges may affect their minds and bodies, but not their drive or determination. We're taking the lessons of our history to help us evolve into a smarter, more secure, more responsive organization. We're here to help, and we're asking you to help us. Yvonne was the first person with a disability to come into my life. And I had a narrow vision of what it meant to be human. You know, the human race is much more complex than I, and we have a responsibility towards one another. I have a responsibility to her because she's my child, but she's also part of the community. And this is how we, one of the ways in which we fulfill an obligation to our fellow man that, uh, that need our help. Uh, there are people who can't do it on their own, we have an obligation. And this is one of the ways it manifests itself.